You're really? still going shirtless, I see. I mean, to stay shirtless at 45 is work, man. <laughs> you, know, you can't fake that part. Some call him the king of R&B. It's been 30 years since Usher broke out into the music scene at the age of 15. And since then, his music has helped define an era of music history. With songs like Love in This Club, DJ Got Us Fallin' In Love, and the iconic Yeah, Usher has given us all the feels at one time or another. Today, I'm going to be sitting down with the cultural icon himself. We're going to dive into his lifelong career. I'm only getting better with time. <laughs> how he's staying in shape on tour at the age of 45. The hardest part is holding on to it, man. And of course, details about his new concert film, Usher, Mondavu in Paris. I wanted to do something that I felt would ultimately be an offering back to Paris. I'm Chuck Arnold. I eat, sleep, and breathe music as a senior entertainment reporter and a music critic at the New York Post. Come along with me and your favorite artists as we explore the history and influences that have shaped their music and careers. It all starts now. The last time I spoke with Usher was just days before he performed at the 2024 Super Bowl halftime show. So we started our conversation catching up on just a few of the things he's been up to since then. A lot has changed. A lot has changed. Now on tour, past, present, and future. I know, I know. You know, had just finished this Paris residency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Super Bowl, obviously, and being the success that it is now, mm -hmm. uh, as the most watched Super Bowl of all time, very happy about that. That's great. Yeah, yeah man. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. And now I got this movie. So <laughs> tell me about that. Monty Moon Paris. Eight yeah. shows in Paris. Yes. Over Paris Fashion Week. That's right. Concert films going to be in theaters. Yeah. So tell me about what the inspiration behind doing the film and how that for a little bit of, I guess, the Vegas residency to Paris. Yeah, well, part of it, um, given the fact that Paris has always given so much to me, every time we go out there, rather we're supporting designers or finding inspiration for our own, you know, creative, I wanted to do something that I felt would ultimately, you know, be an offering back to Paris. Okay. So the rendezvous in Paris, eight shows uh, now filmed by my company, uh, Kingdom Films, is in theaters. AMC Theaters, September the 12th to the 15th. And this is all of the things that I, I wanted, plus some. You okay. know, having the ability to have a successful uh, residency in Las Vegas right. and now bring it to Paris and elevate everything. Fashion, the lights, the stage, you know, the creative, all of it elevated up. Yeah. And then bringing the cinematic element to it as well, working with Anthony Mandler yeah, yeah, to yeah. really create a movie. Some may look at it and, and say, oh, wait, wait a minute. This is an amazing live performance, but we actually made a movie together. When you, yeah. when you see the entire experience. Yeah, no, journey. it definitely has cinematic elements yeah. and you do well, music videos with him, with Anthony in the Well, past. doing music videos, yeah. doing uh, creative uh, for confessions, all things that, you know, kind of spoke to our long-standing relationship of 25 years. Okay. And in the same way that I've been able to celebrate all of my legacy moments, right? In the, the nostalgic way that says, oh, wait a minute, we go all the way back to the beginning. Cause I go back to the beginning uh, yeah. uh, within this show. Yeah. Uh, having the ability to work along with him, you know, felt natural. Uh, felt like this is something that uh, will be remembered in time and history. That, when you did that, eight shows in Paris, mm -hmm. You, that was right after it was announced that you were going to be the Super Bowl headliner. Yep. So that was a moment and kind of almost the beginning of this Usher movement and moment yep. that is still going on right now. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that and like how that captured the energy at that moment as things were really blowing up for you again. We made some really strategic decisions after Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, after Las Vegas was an obvious success. I wanted to, to do something that I felt would be special. So I filmed uh, my Paris residency, um, eight shows, uh, of which, you know, this was uh, an opportunity for me to not only capture what I did in Las Vegas, but capture a moment in history, okay. a moment in time. Uh, and for me, it was my opportunity to launch a film. 
uh, Kingdom Films has now been established uh -huh. and has its first film. There you go. I yeah. love that. I love that. This is coming out and you in the middle of a tour. Yeah. And now you've got this live. Doing Fashion Week, by the way. Country film. So so there's something grand about Fashion Week launches, right? There you go. You know? I know. It's like <laughs> there's some correlation going on there. Well, so there but tell me the having that be out there now, when people can actually go see you live, yeah. is this almost like a commercial or like for the tour because you know, you can it feel the experience and the excitement and maybe want to go see the show. Well, the truth is that moment was so amazing and not everybody got a chance to fly to Las Vegas to see it. Right. We didn't capture it in Las Vegas, but we did capture it in Paris and we elevated everything. We elevated the fashion, the dance, mm -hmm. uh, the, the music, mm -hmm. um, the technical aspect of it. And this would allow everybody from around the world who didn't get the opportunity to come to Vegas or Paris to be able to experience that. Be able to experience it, and then like you can go see you on so the in essence, present future tour. So in essence, this is the equivalent of actually going to the show. Uh, the way we captured it, it makes you feel as though you were in the room. Okay. Yeah. Um, now it past, is intimate. I, oh, it's you know. extremely intimate. Yeah. And um, you know the the connective uh, cinematic things that we do in addition to the live performance really elevates it elevates it to to be a movie, not necessarily just a live performance. Okay. Now, how does this, the Rendezvous in Paris show, the show that you see in the concert film, mm -hmm. how does that differ from the past, present, future tour and the show you'll see that you're doing live? At this rate, I just feel as though I've been continually growing this idea. Um, there are some similarities. Um, there are moments uh, where I've actually been able to go even further back into my catalog with uh, past, present, future. Um, you see me skating. You, you know, there's cultural moments that only happen in Las Vegas that were able to happen in Paris. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, it was the opportunity to celebrate the true city of lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Las Vegas, they say it's a city of lights, but Paris is really the city of lights, mm -hmm. the original city of lights. Yeah. Cool. You're out on the road after the residency, mm -hmm. which you did for a minute. Yeah. Now you're out seeing different places. How does it feel to be back touring and on the road again? Feels great. Feels yeah. great. The hardest part is, you know, uh, trying to balance all of it, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm mindful every day of how can I connect to my fans all around the world? This is not just about what happened domestically or what happened internationally in Paris. It's about an entire world of people being able to share an experience that feels unique. Mm -hmm. And in the same way that, you know, fans have come out in droves to sold out shows all across America and now in uh, uh, Europe as well, uh, hopefully they get a chance to experience just a, a bit of what that energy feels like in the room yeah. September the 12th to the 15th. Well, it looks like I know the tours. Everybody's been raving about the show so yeah. far, um, which is great. But this tour, launching this tour and releasing this movie, yeah. this is all happening 30 years mm -hmm. after you released your debut album, yep. August 30th, 1994. Yep. Tell me about that, the significance of that, the 30 years, all of this happening, this moment coming together right now for you. Because there was an emphasis on the beginning of my career within this show, it felt good to actually perform on the day I actually made my first offering to the world. Uh, it felt really good to look up at the screen and see what I saw. Yeah, I don't want to give it all away, but right. there's a, obviously a AI technology that we've used that allows us to manipulate time and history. And uh, to be able to look at my younger self and remember the same energy and look at some of the photographs and things that I share within past, present, future. It just really felt uh, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. uh, I was overwhelmed with joy and appreciation, man, that 30 years later, I'm doing this and I'm still feeling creative. Yeah. I'm still feeling excited about it. Cool. I feel passionate about it. And obviously people are, are enjoying it. That's, I mean, 30 years, it's 15 years old. Don't got, take me back to that 15 year old boy, I guess, at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Who is launching this beginning of this amazing career that you've had. What was going through your head or what was going through his head as a 15 year old beginning what turned out to be this amazing career? Mm. 
What was going through my head was the destination. I think at some point we all have to have an imagination and a dream of what it could be. And me chasing that dream, me in my mind seeing an audience that would greet me and know my name and know my songs and sing and dance and feel love and passion, all of those things mm -hmm. were what I was always thinking about. Uh, the rest of it would become the journey. Rather, people were falling in love to my music, mm -hmm. dancing for the first time, maybe even learning English for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I thought about that. I just thought about the destination. And uh, it was having an audience, having people celebrate my music. Wow, it's awesome. Yeah. Special memories of making that first album? I mean, I know it's been, you know, yeah. going back three decades now. Yeah. What are your special memories? Mm. Well, the first time ever being in New York City, mm -hmm. uh, amazing memories there. Um, what was that like for you? I mean, you know, coming from Atlanta, I guess, yeah. growing up there, what was it like being here for the first time making that album? I mean, in the same way uh, that you're, you know, you go to school, you go to college, you have professors, you have teachers, they mm -hmm. have what they have to offer to you until you learned enough to maybe go out and start your own practice. Uh, and as a result of having incredible teachers and people who can uh, uh, educate you mm -hmm. and prepare you for success, I look at my career the same way. So the things I saw, the people I was able to be around, the experiences that I was able to have mm -hmm. coming from Atlanta, Georgia, or before that, Chattanooga, Tennessee, it was a bit shocking, but it, uh, it, it prepared me. It prepared me uh, for the creativity. It prepared mm -hmm. me for... Uh, the vulnerability, the expression, because people just move differently in New York than what I saw <laughs> in Atlanta. Right. Uh, so much so that I got or gained the confidence to then go back to Atlanta and know with certainty, oh, got it, but this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to now do it my way. Right. right. I'm now going to go know. through my experience and right. then, you know, so on and so forth. And I, we talked about this before, my way, you know, yeah. the first album, maybe just a little bit of a disappointment to a certain extent, mm -hmm. right? But my way, yep. everything really clicked and took off. Yeah. Was there pressure, you know, like for you coming up as a teenager? I think, I think the version of um, who you are when someone else is articulating you is a matter of collaboration. Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, it's right. And sometimes it's correct for certain experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, because I was as young as I was, I hadn't quite uh, found my tone, hadn't quite found my story. Uh, it wasn't until later that I recognized, oh, it's not until I actually tell my story that I really make a connection to people. Okay. And having that confidence that these stories are relevant in a way that will make people feel something, that will make people not feel alone, rather they fall in love, rather they're going through heartbreak, heartache, or rather they're celebrating. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a career, that becomes a connection to your fans, that now, 30 years later, allows me to celebrate my music. That's awesome. And it's 20 years from Confessions. Yep. So that's another big anniversary. Yep. That is the blockbuster mm -hmm. that everyone, if, you know, if the, it's the thriller of Usher's catalog, right? Tell me about those songs and making that statement, because obviously it was a blockbuster, but it was also a statement of you as an artist and what, you know, revealing more of yourself to your fan. Yeah. Well, now 20 years later, being able to celebrate it, um, there's a few things, obviously. One, um, sharing, you know, very intimate details about my life, as well as intimate experiences that I felt people could relate to um, was one. Uh, the other was the fact that it sold 1.1 million units in the first week. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Two historical kind of things for me uh, mm -hmm. in the lineage of who I am as an artist. Um, you know, I was very happy uh, to have had that experience um, and very happy to, for the first time, have connected to an entire international audience. Mm -hmm. um, I was, you know, hopeful. Yeah, that man. people would not only continue to celebrate it, and every night that I go out there and I hear them sing these songs as loud as they do, I realize uh, how important those songs were. Yeah, I mean, I was just say they mean different things now, mm -hmm. or like, uh, have you grown into them in a different way as others have grown with you, I guess, listening to them all these years? Well, I guess a classic record is a classic record, mm -hmm. right? 
and rather people are being introduced to it for the first time because they feel something or rather they are going through what I'm talking about. Um, you know, I guess I'm very blessed to have been able to capture those songs and be able to make videos and creative. Uh, and that's the same thought and sentiment with Rendezvous, that I would be able to capture something and be able to offer an experience mm -hmm. uh, that would have otherwise been very intimate if you were in the actual room. Right. Uh, right. But to be able to have captured Rendezvous the way that I did and now be able to have it be on major screens and theaters from September the 12th to the 15th and have people come in the same way they come and see my live performance mm -hmm. together in a room and feel as though they're, they're there. There's the sound is like top, top quality because it's AMC theaters. Mm -hmm. The visuals, to be able to have your undivided attention. Not often do we actually go to a concert and actually put our phones down and just look at the show. In this environment, it's all about that connection. Yeah, 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 yeah. Were well, you inspired a little bit by like Taylor and Beyonce last year, you know, put their concert phones in theaters. Yeah. Was that a little bit of an inspiration for you? Absolutely. You know, uh, to see the success that they had and the, uh, the commitment that they have to their core fans mm -hmm. that they might not necessarily get to perform for live. You know, this is an international film, so it's uh, on, you know, uh, theater, it's in theaters around the entire world. Mm -hmm. So I may, there may be places that I just may never get a chance to go because right. there's just not enough days in the year, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'll get a chance to connect with them and they'll get a chance to connect to a very uh, relevant moment in my history and my career um, that started in Las Vegas and made its way to Paris. Great. 30 years, how have you evolved both as an artist and as a man over those three decades? I've learned. In 30 years, I've learned a lot. I've lived a lot. I've loved a lot. Um, and I feel like all of the experiences that I've had have only made me better, have only um, reminded me that staying the course and making it about the music and the dedication to creating something that makes people feel something is mm -hmm. worthwhile. Sometimes it may not feel like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you have two sons who are about the same age you were yeah. when you started. How is that? I mean, that's the cycle of life, I guess, but how is it, you know, seeing, I guess, yourself at that age and them somewhat? Or can you believe what you even did back then when you look at them now? Well, part of it is um, almost out of body because I now feel like I'm my mother at times, trying mm -hmm. to ration with my boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, the other half of it is beautiful because I get a chance to um, be patient and help them within their process of discovering what they want to do with their lives. They're not me, I'm not them. Uh, and to be available for them, to help them, uh, is something that I daily work on and I care about. I want them to find what they want to do and I want them to be passionate, not only because they see me passionate, but know that I am passionate about them finding what they want to do. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, you're still doing the dance moves, not yes. slowing down at all. How, how's it getting? I mean, you know, still, you're very young, 45, but is it different these days, you know, having to do it over and over? <laughs> I'm only getting better with time. <laughs> That's what's up. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, we had a bit of a rough start with this tour, which caused me to have to postpone shows till later on in the year. Um, but I feel great. I feel wonderful. I'm so happy to have kicked off the tour in DC and have many shows to go, but I'm not losing any steam. I'm getting a little bit more rest and trying to really take care of myself. Um, as I said, the experiences that I've had have only helped me grow wiser. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm You're really still going shirtless, it. I see, in the movie and on the tour. Yep. You're still doing You're still pulling that off. Yep. How's, that, how's that working for you? I mean, to stay shirtless at 45 is work, man. <laughs> you know, you can't fake that part. You, you know? did that in the Super Bowl, too. I saw I saw that part. You know, Everyone hardest, saw that part. The hardest part is holding, <laughs> yeah, the hardest part is holding on to it, man. Uh -huh. uh, but I'm doing, I'm doing well. You know, close to four shows to five shows a week is keeping me in shape, you know? There you go. There you go. <laughs> and you're still driving the ladies wild. There's, you know, core fan base I is female. Why is that, lady? So, huh? What's going on? Still have that. Does it feel good. Mojo. Smell good. 
I look good and make love good. There you go. There you go. There you go. Well, you, whatever is doing is working. How is that? I mean, like they, it is an intimate relationship that you have and then you create with the female fan base, you know, that are just loving up on you during those shows. You know what? It's about um, a very classic R&B experience that is all about serenading and connecting with the audience. Um, it's one of the highlights of my shows when I actually go out into the audience uh, and sometimes they take my mic, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, I'm able to sing and uh, and connect and just, just enjoy them, you know? Yeah. I want my fans to feel free, happy, uh, and and I want them to enjoy themselves. Yeah. You got married after the Super Bowl, right after you performed. Yep. I mean, how'd you pull that off? You, I mean, that you didn't tell me you were going to do that when we talked last time. You, you, you had that up your sleeve. Tell me how you pulled that off and how that must have sent. What was already an amazing moment to the next level for you? What was already an amazing moment was peaked by a moment that I would remember forever. I was very happy to not only conclude my time in Las Vegas with the residency and then the Super Bowl, but to start on a new journey with my amazing wife and I was very happy to do it there. It's probably one of the easiest ceremonies that I've ever experienced in my life. Did you know that uh, Elvis Presley, he actually, uh, uh, an impersonator? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, so yeah. <laughs> No, but it was, it was cool. It was, it was, it was uh, something out of history, man. You hear about these kinds of things, but mm -hmm. to have been able to do it was really a joyous moment between me and my wife That's and awesome. my children and my intimate and immediate family who was there. It was an abrupt thing. We we decided at the last minute to do it. Wow, wow, it's beautiful. And this the the kudos have been coming ever since then. You know, you had the Lifetime Achievement Award at the yeah. BET Awards, the Icon Award. I saw you at the Apollo, the Spring Benefit for that. Just all these career achievement awards. But you know, you're only 45. You're not done. You've got mm -hmm. like a lot more ahead of you. But how does it feel to be getting these like lifetime laurels and you know these kind of honors at this stage of your life? Mm. I feel honored to be honored. Um, I put in a lot of work and a lot of time. Sometimes, uh, you know, you question, you know, is it too early for these things mm -hmm. or is it too late? I don't know. Um, I've always felt like uh, a pioneer in some way. And, uh, you know, these accolades and recognizable moments of honor represent legacy. So um, to be at both ends of the spectrum, rather introducing something new and keeping the energy high and fresh mm -hmm. um, is where I feel I am, while at the same time being celebrated in the same way that my peers and incredible artists and legacy artists have been. I feel very fortunate. Yep, was that your present? And I guess you got your past as well. Yeah. And in the future, so what's the future look like, like the next 30 years? The next 30 years look very promising. You know, now having the opportunity to say as a, um, a director and producer of an amazing uh, live movie, uh, Kingdom Films uh, is a major priority to me. I only hope that people get a chance to get an inkling of how incredible and amazing the energy was at La Cienne in Paris with this residency. Uh, rendezvous. I want people to come out and enjoy this September the 12th to 15th. It's on big screens around the world. You didn't get a chance to come to Las Vegas. You may have not had the opportunity to come to Paris. There you but go. you do have this and this is just for you. That's awesome, man. So, and it definitely, yeah. to me, if you watch it, it makes you want to go see the tour. There you go. So, you know, <laughs> it, it works on all levels yeah. in that way, man. It's so great to talk to you again. It's Thank always you. great to talk yeah, to you, Yeah, man. Too. You know, like, this has been uh, conversations over your career. I think, you know, we've talked Thank since you, very early in the beginning. Always, man. So, yeah, man. Thank and, you. It, you know, so proud to see what you do your thing this year. Been great to see all everything coming to you that you so much deserve. Thank so you, brother. I know there's more to come. Thank you, brother. 30 right. years, you said another 30 years. I'm like, there we go. We'll, we'll talk again. <laughs> and like, well, we'll talk before that, but yeah, we'll right. talk in 30 years as well. <laughs> <laughs>
Go see Usher Rendezvous in Paris on September 12th through the 15th in an AMC theater near you and book your ticket to see him on the Past, Present, Future Tour.